I always imagine that paradise will be a kind of library. Jorge Luis Borges. Welcome to our second masterclass. I am so happy, I'm so eager to have you all in our second masterclass. It's a pleasure to have you here. And this is the second masterclass and it's named Assessment of Reading, Fiction and Nonfiction. So really, reading is something that can transport you to another world. And we have these two genres that are so important. Let's enjoy this second masterclass. But I have to refresh our mind in our first masterclass that we had eight days ago. It was in that gave that great digital tool that is called Wizard Me. We certainly uh, eat, and it's so important because now we are using the platform that helps us so much with worksheets of different topics, summer, literature, reading, listening, etc. So take advantage to all of you that are connecting right now to our second masterclass. Take advantage of all these and the importance that our, our two professors are going to give us. So welcome to our second masterclass. I am Ingrid Marroquin, an English professor of Mesoamericana University of Quetzaltenango. Welcome to all. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Diana Godinez. I'm a professor, an English professor graduated from Universidad Mesoamericana. It's such a pleasure to greet all of you this afternoon. And it's a moment of learning, a moment of improving our teaching skills and taking advantage of this wonderful masterclass. Today, we're going to have two very well-prepared speakers who's, who are going to teach us important things about reading and how to take advantage of all of our students' skills. Let me introduce Ms. Licenciada Wendy Dedelson. She holds a bachelor's degree in marketing and international business. She is also a certified TESOL by the School of International Training. Wendy has been a guest speaker at regional conference for teachers of English and also has been invited to train teachers at some schools in Retauleu, Huehuetenango, Salcaja, and Quetzaltenango. She has been working in the TEFL world for over two decades. She has been and has trained professional English teachers for more than 10 years. Licenciada Wendy Detlefsen is currently the coordinator of Profesorados en Inglés at Universidad Mesoamericana. I'm also glad to introduce Licenciada Jerry Chavez. She's a former coordinator at Christian Tutoring Center, illustrator of Christian Doodles Garabatitos de Fe, online tutor, and professor at Universidad Mesoamericana. Licenciada Jerry Chavez has been teaching English to children and teenagers for 18 years in the Highlands of San Marcos Department, Comitancillo, to be more precise. She believes that teaching a new language to children requires passion, meaningful teacher-student relationship, novelty, and countless funny stories. So let's welcome our speakers for today. And remember that all of this is brought to you thanks to Profesorados en Inglés de Universidad Mesoamericana. So, welcome. Okay, so good afternoon, everybody. I'm going to be sharing with you um, important information about nonfiction. And in order to work with that, we're going to start with a review. We know that today's session is concentrated in checking on ways to assess the ability of comprehending a text. And when we are teachers of English in the region, in this country, or in any part of the world in the 21st century, we are required not only to teach the language, sometimes we are required to teach content through the language. And that's the case of most of 
our colleagues at Universidad Mesoamericana. The ones that teach English, they have to teach not only how to speak, how to use the correct grammar, but we are, we are also required to teach content. For example, physics, uh, a little bit of graphic design content and adapted to the students. And in our case at Profesorados en Inglés, we have to teach them how to teach, but also things like investigative methodology, elocution, uh, British and American culture. And when we do that, we know that we have to use textbooks. So all of those textbooks belong to the category of nonfiction. So in order to begin, let's review. The following are features that we find in nonfiction texts. And I'm gonna ask you to participate in the chat box of Facebook and share with us what is it that we're seeing. This example that you see on your screen is one from social studies, yeah? So let's say that you're teaching this. We have one feature there that is called timeline. Now, what about the part that we have on the left? That's a map, right? That's another classical feature in a nonfiction text. What about the following two? Here we have, it's the same book, right? Social studies. Look at all of the features we can see there. The first one is called, who tells me? Let's see if somebody can tell me in the, in the chat box. It's called a heading, right? What about this one that appears in green? on the right of your screen. That's called a subheading. And then on the left, these two where I have vocabulary and academic vocabulary, that could be called also a glossary. It would be better if I have not only the words, but also the definitions. But at least I have a list, right, of the words the students need to know in order to comprehend this couple of pages. So as you can see, textbooks always have these sort of features that help students understand. Okay, let's see more examples. Look at this. This comes from a science book, okay? So the feature I see on the right of the screen, it's called, a sidebar, okay? Sometimes they have information like the one that appears here. Sometimes they have exercises. Sometimes they include the glossary in the sidebar. Sometimes they include like further reference or um, pages that I need to go back and check. Anyway, that's a feature from a nonfiction text. This one. Only in these two couple of pages, I have more than one image, right? I just cut one small section, but as you can see there, I have three. In the previous ones here, the background of the page, let's say that's an image as well. Here, I also have a map. Okay, now let's take a look at the following. This is also from science. Yeah, and as you can see, there's a lot of information. The ones that are starting to be doctors uh, may be related to this, like this is the way their textbooks look like. So here we have another feature. This is a diagram and that diagram has a label, right? But it also has a caption. That small piece of information in the bottom of the page or the bottom of the diagram or graph I have, um, it's important. Sometimes it's only making reference or where did the author get the image from, but sometimes it has further information that helps the reader comprehend better. And here, in this small piece that you can there, that is biodiversity and agriculture, culture. You have a lot of letters, right? Like most crop plants, blah, 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 blah. And then you have something that's the figure six 
M. This is what we call bold words. Sometimes bold words refer to this, figures, graphs, etc. Sometimes there we have the key vocabulary. I didn't highlight this, but on your screen on the left, you don't only have them in bold words. They also appear highlighted in yellow, right? Sometimes textbooks have this. Okay. What about this one? What appears on the right? That circle. That's called a diagram as well. And this is one example of a chart. This is something you may find in nonfiction texts. This, it's a graph. Yeah. Sometimes they are bar graphs, sometimes they are circles, but this one is more complex. So all of these are the features that we can find. Now, what about this one? This is very simple, but it's another feature from many nonfiction texts. This is called table of contents, right? So let's say that we're reading an essay that's in the category of nonfiction. I'm not going to find a table of contents within an essay. However, if what I am studying is a textbook, I'm definitely going to find this. Yeah. Okay, so features that we found, table of contents, um, sidebar, glossary, heading, subheading, chart, et cetera, et cetera. All of them belong to the category of nonfiction. And this, all of these elements help the reader comprehend the text. They are there for a reason. The purpose of having all of these features is to help the reader or the student to understand the content. Yeah. And all of these belong to a category that we may call chivos, yeah? For us as teachers, when we're creating a test, when we are creating a worksheet, we can come and say, okay, what, like from this page, which elements are gonna help my students understand better the text or understand the text in an easier way? Okay, I'm gonna use the diagram. So this, I just copy paste and I put it in a worksheet, yeah? And I check their comprehension. When I do that, I'm helping them comprehend and I'm using the feature the text already has. Now, same thing with all of the elements, right? Now let's see, how do we apply it? So we know that it's a review or for some of you, perhaps this is the first time you study it. So don't worry, you can rewatch the recording of today's masterclass and study them one by one. But let's see, this masterclass, the purpose of it is to have ideas on how to apply it, how to use strategies that help our learners boost their comprehension. So let's take, a look at this example. Here, I'm gonna share with you one book. Yeah, it's only a chapter, yeah. So as you can see this, just from the layout of the chapter, we may infer that this was designed for teenagers. Yeah, this is not for children. And they, it may be for teenagers or adults. How do I know that? Here, I have something that says, teens talk. So, oh yeah, and look at the picture. Those are teenagers, right? Okay, what's the name of the chapter? Food and nutrition. Okay, so let's pretend this is what I have to teach. Oops, I'm sorry. Here. Okay, so section number one of chapter eight is what you see on your screen. They're describing elements, main elements of nutrition. There are some exercises, as you can see here on the right, hands-on activity, this and that. How much protein is in your refrigerator? It might be another exercise. Okay, so it's like a normal textbook, yeah? Then it finishes and it says, let's do a review, right? Let's apply it 
let's expand it to a writing project. Let's expand it to something from your real life, right? Let's start breaking habits, et cetera, et cetera. And then you have section two that talks about vitamins, minerals, and water, et cetera, okay? So let's say this is the book you're using. Um, we're gonna use this as sample reading. So as you remember, one of the elements that appeared in the first pages of this chapter was this, the description of what are calories, right? This is a typical textbook. It tells the teenagers what is the definition and it uses words that they use, right? It uses items that they are familiar with, pizza, apples, salads, etc. things that they already know. Okay, so in that way, the book is very friendly. I'm just gonna concentrate in this couple of paragraphs, yeah? So I'm gonna give you some seconds for you to read it. Okay, now, after your students have read this, they might summarize the information. And I'm gonna explain why. What is the typical exercise all teachers do, at least in Guatemala. When they give you texts like this, nonfiction, they tend to say, okay, guys, let's read chapter eight, highlight it, and summarize it, right? In Spanish or in English? The Spanish teachers do exactly the same. Chicos, abran el libro, página 50, lean el capítulo completo y lo resumen. And that's it. And that's their assessment. Okay. It's okay. I mean, think about it. Think it bloom wise if you want to. Think it in, in terms of critical thinking. When a student is able to summarize something, in order to summarize, you have to analyze, you have to discriminate, you have to revise, compare, contrast, etc. And then in order to say things with your own words, paraphrase it, right? you're showing that you understand. We know, we teachers know that it's forbidden to have a competency or an indicator that says, um, my students understand the text. Uh, I cannot say that because I cannot measure understanding, but I can measure, I can definitely verify that my students are summarizing properly. And this is the reason why I will say, okay guys, if you are already used to assign the students with a reading, highlight it, and then summarize it, good. I agree with you. The student that is able to summarize is comprehending the text. Good. We're in the right path. But let's do it in a way that is friendly with the student's brain. And how do we do that? With graphic organizers. How about saying, okay, guys, we're going to summarize chapter eight, section one but we're going to use this. First, read every page. And for every um, element of nutrition, do the following summary. So if you remember the first element, we were checking information about calories. Okay, so based on the text, calories are the units to measure the energy released when nutrients are broken down. This is from the text. Calories can give us the energy our bodies need to function properly. Again, this information is in the text. And calories have different content in different foods, depending on their ingredients or origin. For example, and we are going to remember about this chart, right? They had a comparison. How can you get 750 calories? You have two options or you eat two slices of pizza, or you eat one slice, one apple, one orange, and one bowl of salad, right? So there, I have a clear reminder, I'm summarizing. And I should do the same with carbs, with proteins, and with fats. Because if you remember, I'm gonna go back, the name of the chapter is, 
Let me show you. Carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. This is section one. Sorry, it's not a chapter. It's section one of chapter eight. So I, I have all of that information. If you remember the pages that I showed you, they have all the types of fats, all the types of proteins, all the types of carbs. And yeah, it's a lot of information. Students might be familiar with it in Spanish. Some of them, maybe they are on a diet already. They have consulted a nutritionist. So maybe they're familiar with it. But I bet you whatever you want that they don't know, like for real, what are calories and that they do have a function this is the reason why nutritionists will always tell you do not eliminate calories entirely from your diet right because they help us so they do exactly the same with all of the elements and at the end as homework if you want to you may give them this graphic organizer and tell them okay guys so now that we did this one by one now let's put it together and let's like take a look. And what is the main idea? And give me a supporting detail and then a second and a third supporting detail and then conclude with something, right? Just sentences. And then on the right, they might be able to write a full summary. And this, by doing this, you're assessing. If they are able to do this properly, you did it, you nail it, yeah? They were able to understand because remember, you're not teaching just English, you're teaching the content. Your exam, what is your exam going to be about? About the vocabulary, the words in English that were difficult to use, to spell? Mm -mm. Your assessment will be on the understanding of all of the elements that nurture a person's body and a person's systems or a set of systems, right? So when your students are able to do this, they're ready for any test. Even if your test is a true, false, multiple choice, circle the correct letter, they will get the information from this that you did in class. Now let's look at another example. This is, um, a book for children, okay? It's also science, but this is for younger learners. So let's say I'm teaching my kids electricity and magnetism, right? Wow, there's a lot of information from me. Take a look at this, right? This is like the warm up. Yeah, they ask children to make an exercise by guessing, you know, inferring, making predictions, etc. Then they have like some starting points, questions. As you can see, we have more features, images, sidebars, etc. Here, more. I have sidebar, heading, subheading, questionnaires, etc. It's a great book. Look at this. Now they start explaining, okay, electric charge, and they explain it. Yeah, and they have great illustrations there. And they do this, okay. And it's called, uh, teachers understand this. Children don't need to understand it, but we teachers, when we see visual literacy connection, oh, visual literacy, this is trendy. This is from the 21st century, right? Students learn better by doing this, by seeing this. Okay, look at this, so there right? All of the features. And then the lesson is over. Now they start summarizing, reviewing. Look at this. There's a math connection. This is great. Even Curriculum Nacional Base asks teachers to do this integration. I'm teaching science. Why am I supposed to connect with the math teacher? <laughs> you should. There's hundreds and thousands of ways you can do it. So this particular book shows how to do it, right? More exercises, yeah, here a project. Again, this is an infographic or a visual literacy connection, et cetera. Okay, so let's say that this is what I'm teaching. 
how do I do it? How can I ask students to show that they comprehend this information? Okay, you can help them. Remember that there are several features. How about concentrating this? Remember this couple of pages, right? An infographic. Okay, let's use the infographic to summarize, but also to check comprehension. How do we do that? How about asking children or teenagers or adults to get the image? Yeah, I'm going to use the image and the caption. So for example, image number one, caption is right there in pink. So students should do this, right? Conductor and insulator. How does this image and caption help me as a learner understand the topic? Well, they help me because they help me write this. Materials can be conductors or insulators. In conductors, most metals, electrical charge can move easily, yeah? When I have insulators like rubber balloons, electrical charge cannot move easily. So it's like uh, fighting, yeah? In metals, all of them move easily. How about this one? It's in the infographic, I just take it from there. And I call it neutral charge. Okay, that's the image and the caption. But what is it that I understand from it? I read this. When the number of positive and negative charges in a material are equal, it is cold or it is neutral. Simple as that. Positive, 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 negative, negative, negative. It's like this, it's neutral. How about this? In a conductor, like a can, uh, negative electrical charges can move easily, yeah? Negatively charged rods that approach a conductor repel the negative charges inside of it. In contrast, positive charges do not move. So if I have negative, a rod that is approaching an object, especially one that is a conductor, right? It's full of charge, positive and negative. What happens? All of the negative charges go down, it repels. And all of the positive stay the same, right? So this is already in the book. But by doing this exercise, my students are showing me that they comprehend. I'm not saying that with this single um, graphic organizer, the unit is covered, I'm able to make a test. No, I mean, I showed you the pages of the book. It has exercises, experiments. It would be great to apply them. But before experimenting, my students need to understand. And I repeat, Assessment is all about indicators. What is going to indicate that the student comprehends this type of things? Is it easier for me as a teacher to grade this than to tell them, okay, guys, so what is a conductor? Some of my students will repeat it as parents, right? Conductor is a aha, but what is it? and they're not gonna have a visual image member. Again, I'm not saying that students that are able to do this are gonna get 100 points and they are going to be scientists and they will be able to prove it. No, but I'm helping them. Remember, our job as teachers is not only to assess them, it's to help them comprehend, help them learn. If there is comprehension, there is learning. If there is engagement, there is learning. And this is the reason why we definitely recommend you using this type of things. There's so many things you can assess this way. So that will be my intervention. I was in charge of nonfiction and I definitely encourage you to cooperate with the learning society. Yeah, society needs to learn and textbooks are a great source 
for you to help your students comprehend better what they are reading. It's not fair to just give them tests, not only true, false, circle the correct choice, or even words. Una mala tacha cinco buenas. Uh, <laughs> that's not fair. But still, teachers, professors are doing this in the 21st century. And that's not fair. That, I mean, that person is just getting one right answer, but it's not actually showing me that he learned something. It's not going to be able to change the word by reciting information, right? So those were my ideas. Thank you for your attention. And we will continue. Okay, but before that, uh, thank you, Ms. Wendy. Thank you, Licenciada Wendy Detlison for all this information. I think that understanding it's the best because they will engage, as you said, they will engage in, a, in, in a learning, in understand, and they will enjoy. That's another word that it's so important. They will enjoy their learning, what they are experimenting in their life. Okay, when I say to a parent, read to a child, I don't want it to say like medicine. What I really want it to sound, it's like chocolate. When you are eating a piece of chocolate, you are And this said by Mem Fox. Thank you, Licenciada Wendy Detrison for this participation. And remember also use the graphic organizers. Remember that works a lot. Thank you, thank you. Okay, Jerry, it's your participation. Yeah, welcome everyone, good afternoon. A pleasure to be here. And I want to start with a question for you. Let me share my screen. And that was a great review, right? I hope that you take different notes there. Okay, let's see. I'm going to share my presentation. Let's imagine this fictional scenario and I want your participation there. So please go to your comments and share with me, share with us your answers. This is the fictional scenario, okay. Let's see, you're trapped. Let's imagine that you're trapped in the last book you read. What are you? Do you need help? <laughs> are you happy there? Let, let's share together in the comments and let's read them. At least I wanna hear two comments. What are you? Do you need help? I hope that the last book that you read was not an Edward Allen Poe story because you will be in troubles for sure. <laughs> that would be dark. <laughs> Share with us, where are you right now? You're trapped in the last book you read. Share with us. Let's read the comments via Facebook. Sure, 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 sure. Where are you? What was the last book you read? Are you happy there? Shahidi Chavez nos dice, at grandma's home. <laughs> oh, that's a good book. <laughs> okay, thank you. One more. So are you happy there, Saili? <laughs> One more comment. The last one that you read. Let's see, let's share. Don't be shy. I'm gonna share mine. I read Peace Life. And are you happy there? Scared. <laughs> Mostly scared. <laughs> Yeah. Worried for not getting home safe. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, yeah, for sure. And that's a good thing about fiction genre. Good thing, or I don't know, it depends. Let's move to this fiction. Why did I share that uh, that question with you? Because somehow when we read fiction stories, we are we're having an adventure. We're having a we're visiting different worlds, right? And it's totally different from what Miss Wendy shared before. Listen, yeah, Wendy, we have different features there. We review those different features, but now it's something different. And it's important for you as teachers to know the difference. And also for us, the teacher students, this important difference. What are, what are these differences specifically? The main purpose here in fiction stories is to entertain, definitely. What was the main purpose? 
and non-fiction stories or non-fiction texts, I'm sorry. What was the main purpose there? Was it to entertain there in non-fiction? What do you think? Here is to entertain. There, what it was, the main purpose? To inform. To inform, to learn, right? Thank you. It has story elements also, fiction stories has definitely story elements. Illustrations and read, definitely we need to read in order. We can skip, we can say, okay, I'm gonna start with chapter one and then I want to move to chapter 11, let's say, <laughs> because I'm definitely gonna be lost there. So in order for that, because we need to teach these story elements, and probably some of you already know this, but probably some of you need to review one more time with us. Let me share this idea with you. This, have you seen this? This is the uh, story elements club, and we can use this with children. Remember that our special um, activity, it's going to be focused on children. So this is our glove that we're gonna be using. And we have five elements here. And the first one, you can see, what would be the first one? It would be setting, right? It's where and when the story takes place. That would be the first element in every fiction story. Then we have characters, who are the story about, okay? Have characters, we can have people, um, animals, creatures there. Then we have the problem, that's for sure. <laughs> The problem, and I represented here with a little cloud, like in a storm. That's a big problem. And then we have this. This could be called a plot or events. You have the, the, an, a B, an M, and an E, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be beginning, middle, and end. So it's important for students to um, have this sequence of events and have in mind that it's this part of the elements of a fiction story. So they could retell the story later. And then we have the solution. And you can see that I represented with the light bulb. And you can use also a band-aid or anything that you can have in mind. Because remember that you can adapt this idea according to uh, what you see in your students and according to what you think could work best or better, okay? So I have these five elements. If you can say it or share it in our, in our comments there via Facebook, it will be setting, characters, problem, the events or plot, and the solution. You can share with us in a comment those elements. That would be great because we have something at the end <laughs> of this session. So let's move to our next slide. And besides this great idea that you can find also on the internet and you can adapt, you can teach the uh, story elements um, by using songs. Remember that children love songs. They remember songs and they will be singing uh, in front of their parents. It doesn't matter if they're not in class, they're always singing songs in English because they are feeling happy to be uh, sharing with you something in another language. That's something that we need to take advantage of. They are excited to be learning and to know more words and more things, especially if it is a new story that they can retell. So using songs is a great idea. We have a story elements, retelling block, the one that I shared with you before, anchor charts and flip books. These flip books are, great, are a great idea because you can also adapt it to different subjects. Even with um, non-fiction text, you can use this idea. And so we want to share with you a handout that you can find there. Um, you can find these sites that you are, we are citing there and also the songs, videos to the song that we recommend you to use. So this is a great idea that you definitely to take notes about. Okay. Let's move to this because remember that our session or our masterclass is about how to assess reading comprehension. And I wanna share with you some strategies that I personally love and that I think that you can adapt to any book and it definitely will uh, give you the time to assess or the opportunity to assess correctly your students, their learning, uh, because you are using different graphic organizers and also different questions and different strategies. So one of the one of these is prediction. Okay, prediction. What is prediction? You're going to share with me. What do you think is going to happen? Why is there an elephant there? If you can see this cover, you can see an elephant. And it says the title, Elephant in My Kitchen. Why do you think is there an elephant in our kitchen? Can you share with us in comments there? Why is there? Let's make a prediction about this book. That's my prediction. 
Why is there an elephant in our kitchen? This is a great book that I definitely we recommend you to use, and it has a great message at the end. Do we have any comment there? Marily Martinez nos dice, the elephant might be hungry. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's a great prediction. Might be really hungry, right? It might be starving somehow. And it's a huge problem to have an elephant in our kitchen. So it's something that our students could share with us. Maybe he, maybe he's hungry or I don't know, maybe he doesn't have somewhere to go. We can hear different prediction. And that's a good thing about working with children. We uh, listen to different ideas and they love sharing uh, their thoughts if they are in a safe learning environment. <laughs> so you need to build this safe learning environment. And how can you do this? By having different strategies for them to help them and by having them um, this um, feeling that they are secure. They, it's feel for them to share and to share what they, they think it's correct. So we have a template here or uh, an organizer that you could be using. And we have at the beginning my prediction and then we have what happened, what really happened. The book that I shared with you before, the cover of this book, you want to find it at the link and the handout that we are going to share with you. And today we're not, we're not going to read this book, but definitely I recommend you to explore it and to check it and to use it with your students. But in order for uh, following this strategy, you have at the beginning your prediction with your students. They write, they draw what is going to happen, or maybe they, they draw the elephant, and then they share what happened really, what really happened. And so why? How can you do this prediction strategy? You can use it before reading, as I did it with you before, using the title or the illustrations. You can use this during the reading, stop and predict what will happen next. Let's say that you're reading the text, you're reading the story, and then you stop for a while and ask them, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think that uh, the main character is going to be happy at the end or something that it would be related with the sequence of the story? And of course, after reading, Confirm or adjust your prediction. That's something that we can be exploring in different ways with our students. And remember that we can share different stories and so we can adapt it, these strategies in order for us to assess their comprehension. The second reading strategy that I'm sharing with you is making connections. I think that making connections is a great reading strategy because we are, um, giving them the opportunity to connect with something that they have experienced before. And the good thing about this strategy is that you have three um, connections, text to self, text to text, and text to the world. This is the first one. And you see that we are working this uh, strategy in one single page, but uh, we can also have all of these three um, connections in one single page too. So let's pay attention to this. It says, Good readers make meaningful connections from the book to something that they have experienced before. And as you can see, they can connect and you can have this information that I highlighted here, thought, experiences, travels, family, friends, and school. You can have it as an anchor chart in your classroom, something that they can be checking and saying, okay, my teacher is asking me to connect this text or this story with something that I've have experienced before. How? Okay, I'm going to think about a personal experience, travel that probably we had, a family moment, um, the time that we shared with our friends, or something that happened at school. And also, if you can see with this strategy, is that you're giving them, um, you're helping them because you have some statements there. This makes me think of that time when I went to the place or something that happened in the story. This is similar to when my family and I shared together an ice cream. Let's say that the story is about um, a character in a, an ice cream shop, right? So um, we can have this according to our, our book, right? The next one that I mentioned you before is connection text to text. And you can have all these as I told you, in an anchor chart, something that they can be checking constantly. They will have this connection to other books, to characters, poems, articles, websites, blogs, and 
the statements that will help them, uh, for example, if you see the, the first one, the character in this story is similar to the character in, let's say, the name of another book that they read, and they're similar, something uh, says within them, oh, I remind this because I read this story before, and it's similar to this, and so they're making meaningful connections that definitely will help them to um, comprehend the story. And text to world. This is important nowadays. They can connect something that they watch in television or they heard movies, current events, games, news, pop culture. And also, also you can have here a statement that will help them. This is like something I heard on the news when and they read about it. And they are connecting the story that they read with something meaningful, They're connecting. And definitely it will be a meaningful learning for them. And also, as I told you, you can have all of this in just one um, single um, organizer. We have text to self, text to text, and text to world. And of course, always, um, the anchor chart in their classroom, or probably they have it uh, in their notebooks. And so it will be really helpful for them when they need to uh, work on this organizer. So it's time for a reading. Let's read this amazing book. It is called The Stick and Stone. And I'm gonna share with you, um, YouTube, let's wait, stop sharing. Just give me a minute. Okay, I'm sharing. Have it here. Let me move here. Pay attention to this cute story. I like this story and I hope you um, use it also in your classes. So let's start. You will be uh, serving this book here, but I'm gonna be reading for you. Okay, let's see. This is Stick and Stone by Beth Mary. Stick. Stone. Lonely, alone, a zero, a one. Alone is no fun. Hmm, that is sad, right? Stick, stone. Alone comes pine cone. Look at pine cone there. Makes fun a stone. <laughs> Won't leave him alone. <laughs> Vanish, says Stick. His word does the trick. <laughs> the stone whispers, Key, you stop up for me. That's just what sticks do. Friends do it too. Stick, stone, no longer alone. They're happy now, can you see? Stick, stone, a friendship has grown. They wonder, can you see that? Explore, wow, that's okay. Lays by the shore. Then thunder and rain. Oh no, a loud hurricane. The thickest wind blown. No. Hold on, calls out stone. There goes pine cone. Can you see pine cone? Again, he's alone. Mm, sad. Mm, search day. Stick, stick, stick. <laughs> and search night, no stick in sight. 
Where could it be? What's this? A huge puddle. Stick is stuck in the bottle. Look, there is a stick. The stone rescues swim quick. Splashing water, right? Your rock stone, says stick. That's just what stones do. Best friends rocks do. Stick stone together again. Stick a stone. A perfect ten. They're together to the end. And now you can see Pinecone there saying sorry. But now all of them are friends. <laughs> So that's a cute story. And what do you think? Is this a fiction story? Does it have the different elements that we shared at the beginning? Let's share with us. Yes, no. What do you think? Why is this a fiction story? Back here. Let me go back to my presentation. Why do you is this a fiction story? Let's mention the elements. Marilyn says yes in the chat. Okay, yes, yes. It definitely has the five elements. Let's review this together. What are they? What are those? Character, settings, character, and we have the problem events, and the solution. Definitely, we have them all. And so let's see, how can we assess this with our students? Let's see if they truly understood this. Uh, we can have this activity, and if you can see, it says identify which of the following settings was not mentioned in the story, Stick and Stone. Which one was not mentioned in the story? Share with us in the comments. You can see images there. What was not mentioned in the story? Which one was not mentioned in the story? See, someone, an answer. What do we have here? We have different settings, but Let's see the first one. Yes, Diana. Mirna Mendoza says the second on the right and Marilyn Martinez says a city. Yes, for sure. Great. That's Andrea the city. Fuentes also says the city. Monse Morales, again, the city. <laughs> sure, the city. Yes, the city was not mentioned in the story. And this is something that we can do with our students. Um, it depends on their level. Of course, we are helping them here because we are giving them the settings, but we could also have a different activity, but asking them to draw the setting. But if you notice the story um, explores different settings, mention different settings, but most importantly here for me was to assess and see if they remember which one was not mentioned. So you did it well for you. Let's move to our next slide. Let me go there. Here we are. What is the evidence in the text? We have this one, the playground. We have the shore, the beach, yes. And we have a model, right? But we don't have an evidence of the city, so that's why. And also you can have this story map. Um, you can summarize all of the elements. You have the characters, the setting, the problem, solution. And if your students truly remember this and they identify the elements, the three elements, that would be um, on point. You nailed this just by them answering this or probably you ask them to draw the pens on their level or, and you can have an example here. You have the characters. I would like to do this with me, but. I know that <laughs> I can hear you, but the characters, the stick, the stone, pine cone. Yes, 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 yes. Let me go back with you, Diana. <laughs> Mirna Mendoza says the characters are the stick and the stone, just what you just said. 
Yes. And what about the setting? We already uh, reviewed the setting. And the problem, what, what, was, what was the problem here? Marina Martinez wrote, uh, it says that they were both alone, the problem they went through and uh, how they solved them. Yes, and how they solved them. What was the solution at the end? What was the solution there? They became friends, right? They are together. Yes, they are together. Even Pinecone is there. What is the lesson or a moral? We have an important lesson there. And we can use this amazing short story, short to review with our students the value of friendship, right? Respect, and also um, to give them the opportunity to have an activity and reinforce this um, environment in our classroom. Remember that for us, it's important to build this safe learning environment for them. And also we are having, of course, the assessment of our reading, okay? So as you said before, what was the setting? We have it there, the problem, the solution, and the lesson and moral we can see at the, in the middle, be a good friend, be kind to everyone. And it's, it's a, good, um, a good lesson. So we also can have this strategy. This is a story map. They could have uh, in their minds what happened at the beginning or the old events, right? At the beginning, the middle, and at the end. And they can retell the story by remembering this and feeling this. So this is important. Um, and you can have, you can find different organizers uh, via internet, but also you can create your own organizers. And that's the good part about this because you can adapt it. You can use pictures, you can use uh, their characters, you can have it there and somehow they will have, oh, I'm amazed, I'm, I'm excited because this is related to the story that I love. And so it's important for you to create this um, visual material for them to help them and to engage them into the story. So help students, so, so you can see what is the main objective to help students to see the sequential relationship between events in a text. In this case, seek and stone. Um, sorry. You can also connect this with um, feelings and you can ask them to see, this is how I know. Why they say that they, for, for example, stick um, felt sad at the beginning and what happened in the middle and what happened at the end. How can they tell you with evidence that this is what it truly is? So you can ask them to check there because of the words, because the text says so, because for the illustrations, both, in this case it would be both, right? And Stick and Stone also with this uh, book, you can also have this as a bonus idea because you can um, take these sentences or phrases that are not common and that definitely you need to explain what are those. In this case, the first one, e, you stuck up for me. It means you were brave for me. And it suggests something that they feel. They feel like, oh, you're brave for me. It's right. And so I'm going to ask you, in this case, you will have, the answers here, and you're going to say which one belongs to which. Lace by the shore. It means that you are a good friend. It means that stick and stone are better friends together. Does it mean relaxing on the beach? Lace by the shore. Number one, two, or three. Yes, Miss Ingrid? No, <laughs> sorry. No, or the second, no? Yes, yes, relaxing on the beach. You rock stone, let's. Andrea. Andrea De Fuentes dice number one, number one. Number one, lace by the shore with number one. Anestar Con Herrera says number three. Okay, yes, number three. That is because it says lace by the shore. <laughs> it's like, ah, relaxing, relaxing on the beach. And you rock stone. It's related to number one or number two. 
You rock, Stone. And it's about feelings one more time, right? And honestly, I truly believe that your students, if they haven't used this uh, statement or they fra this phrase, they will definitely use it. <laughs> they will say, you rock, teacher. <laughs> you rock, oh, my friend. So it's something that we can also take advantage of, right? And stick stone, a perfect 10. Stick and stone are better friends together, right? Hmm. They're better together. They are better together. That's why it's a perfect 10. And it's also about feelings. Let's move to our next slide. I know. Slow. Okay. Now, <laughs> as you can see, we have different strategies here, right? You can adapt it. You can um, create your own your own organizers, but the most important thing here is for you to assess their comprehension, connect with them, uh, motivate them to read, because sometimes you know that uh, some children could say, I don't like reading. Why do I have to read this book? So if you connect reading with um, something excited or something that they could definitely remember and it would be meaningful for them, it would change the entire environment. When you said reading time, they would say, yeah, <laughs> or yeah. And that's the uh, goal for us. And of course, to assess their comprehension. That's why it's important for us to use different strategies. Today, we just share three of them that you can find a lot more. So Jenny, I, have, I have something for you. Jenny, yes. uh, Jenny Calderon says, that she loves the digital material. It's so nice. So that's what she <laughs> says. Yeah, so it is. Yeah, it helps it a lot and it's meaningful. Yeah, yeah, it's something that uh, we can um, download. Download it uh, specifically, as I told you, or especially as I told you, it's something that you can create by yourself and get some inspiration, interest, or blogs or Instagram accounts. But definitely. Um, it's something that you could create also. Get some ideas and create your own material, right? Thank you for that comment. Now let's play. We have a special prize for you because we are um, going to um, assess nonfiction and fiction genre. All of the features that Licenciada Wendy share and some of the things that I share also are gonna be this in this, um, in this hood. So I'm gonna share this with you and now let's play. Just wait. Let me give me. So I'll be ready. <laughs> You want to know what Remember. is the special prize? <laughs> yes, Miss Wendy. No, I, I was going to tell the audience to remember to, as soon as you get the link to the Kahoot, make sure you access the game and are showing because, as Jerry mentioned, there's a prize at the end for the winner. I'm going to share anyway the link here. So, Diana or Lisa Dying, you could help me. Okay, you can just scan the code or you can access uh, through the link that um, it's going to be there for you via Facebook. The link is already in the chat box okay, of our Facebook transmission, so you can find it and log in from there. Anagabi, welcome. Welcome, Anagabi. The entry. Mirna, welcome. Here. Welcome, Fair. Susan. <laughs> Welcome, Susan.
Okay. Be ready. We have a special prize. Remember that. Great, Anna Esther. Great, great. <laughs> Maria Carmen. Maria Carmen. Monse, welcome. There you are, Monse. Great. Jolie, welcome, Jolie. <laughs> Do we Just start? Women. What happened yes. to men? <laughs> Tell me. Anna Steph, welcome. Should we start? Yeah, let's begin. Sorry? Let's begin. Okay, let's begin. Let's start. Okay, fiction and nonfiction. Hmm, the time and place of the story. What is it? Characters, plot, solutions, editing, what do you think? Uh, let's see, 13. Okay, the course is decided. Hmm. <laughs> let's move. Okay, let's see. Next question, true or false? The table of content is a non-fiction feature. What do you think, remember? Hmm. <laughs> 11. <laughs> The table of content is a non-fiction feature. Yes, for sure. <laughs> okay, Jennifer Luarca. Number three, double points. Attention, double points. By retelling, students show full comprehension of the story. What do you think? <laughs> True. Good, yes, that's important. It was double points. It was an important question. That's how you are gonna assess. Double points. Summarizing is not recommendable to assess textbooks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, both. So, number five out of eight. A fiction story includes characters, setting, plot. Problem and solution. Mm -hmm. Sure, it's true. Yes, remember, remember our storytelling story element gloves. Okay, number six. This is a non fiction feature. Pay attention. This is a non fiction feature. Is it true or is it false? It's true. Remember that we reviewed this with the licenciada Wendy. Yes. Jennifer Luarca. 
Okay, number seven. We're almost finishing. This is a fiction story. What do you think? This is a fiction story. Is this? Oh, that's the past. Yeah, definitely. It's a fiction story. It's not real, right? Very good. And the last one. This is the last one. Let's see. Eight of eight. People, animals, or creatures in the story. We are talking about the plot, the problem, the setting, characters. If we say people, animals, or creatures in the story, if we're referring to this. <laughs> characters. Yeah, those are the characters. And we finished the Kahoot. Let's see your podium. Third place, Anna Steph. Congratulations, Anna Steph. Second, Juliana. And the first place. It is Jennifer Loarca. Congratulations, Jennifer. <laughs> so, uh, runner or so? Ah, I, I didn't read that. <laughs> I didn't read it. So, what is our special prize for you today? You're going to have the opportunity to have a self portrait um, illustration. Uh, by Garabatitos de Fe. So please contact me, Jennifer Luarca. I'm going to be making for you a self portrait illustration. So I hope you like it. <laughs> that is the prize for you. Congratulations. So, Miss Wendy. Okay. So, um, as you were able to see, I mean, Jerry did a great job by integrating all of the elements from the master class. And the idea was that at the end, you were able to refresh all of the information that we covered today. Um, if you paid attention to the title of the masterclass, this was part number one. So we know that this is something that we may not cover in 60 minutes of a masterclass, but this is something that, yeah. I forgot to mention something, I'm sorry. An idea that I had for you, I'm sorry, I forgot it. This one, we can ask our students to bring um, a pine cone, a stone, and a stick. And so they will be creating this. And, and, and googly eyes, right? And that's as simple as that. They will be creating the characters. And we will be assessing a comprehension. Where is my stick? <laughs> because they will be retelling the story. And mm -hmm. they could be playing, retelling. Mm -hmm. And they will remember the story because it will be meaningful for them. Because they are playing. And they have their own characters there. So. Exactly, yeah. So as you were able to see, I mean, these are the things that we can do to assess comprehension and to make it meaningful. This is something that you always have to remember. The whole purpose of providing students with all of these tools is not only to look like the fancy teacher or the engaging teacher or the creative teacher. This is not about you. This is about your learners. So we are going to use all of these tools in order to facilitate the learning. Remember that this is our function. And the more we engage them, the more successful they will be after we are gone. Remember that we just have them for a short period of time. It doesn't matter if you teach them the six years in a row of primary, like if you are the English teacher, the toda la primaria, it doesn't matter. <laughs> they will see you, yeah, but the six years are gonna be over eventually. So it's not only about being successful in your class, it's a matter of being successful in life. And all of these strategies will make them better readers. And remember, if they are better readers, they're definitely gonna be better thinkers. And this is what the people not only the people, the world needs. Look at everything that is going on around our city, like beginning by Shella and the problem with pollution and continuing up to Europe. I mean, all of the situations that are happening at the same time probably will not happen if people were better thinkers. So this is our master class. We hope you enjoyed that. And now we go back to Ingrid and Diana.
Yes, here we are. And thank you, Miss Wendy and Jerry. Thank you, thank you for giving us so many activities, so many uh, things that will help us in uh, our way of teaching. Thank you very much. And remember, today a reader, tomorrow a leader. And that was said by Margaret Fuller. That's so important. If we read today, maybe some of our students will be great leaders. In, in the world and in life, and we need them, we need them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you to both of you, Lisa Zias, for all the amazing presentation. Um, if you have any questions from all of our audience who has any questions, please write it in the chat and I'll gladly ask or pass your questions to both of the listeners yeah, so they can give us an answer. I'm going to give you uh, a few moments so you can take your time and write your answer. And meanwhile, I have a message for both of our presenters. And Esther Cobon says, amazing presentation. Thank you, Lick Wendy and Lick Yeti. We also have, uh, oh, we have a question from, what application can be used to create the charts? And um, that question was made when Licenciado Wendy was presenting nonfiction reading. Okay, thank you, Sumi. Uh, we're glad to have you as part of the audience. And of course, for, like you may create your own as Jerry was mentioning, you may get some ideas at Pinterest, you may get some ideas at Teachers Pay Teachers and then create your own using Canva, using PowerPoint, you may also use Google Slides. I mean, it's just a matter of, of dedicating some of um, your time, your planning time. And the best tip I will give you is to have a blank template. And then every time you use it, make sure you adapt it. Like for example, what Jerry did that she included the illustrations from the story so you can use it for different stories at the same time. And for nonfiction text, same thing. I mean, you could ask them to summarize something um, that is fiction and use exactly the same template I was using, right? So you, depending on the words you write, this is the way you're going to, to find it more useful. The diagram that I use that says, blank are, can, and have might be substituted. Uh, for example, the illustration, if it seems too childly, let's say, or too much for children, you may adapt it and use a real picture of a teenager or a picture of your teenagers, a group of uh, your group of students. I mean, there are many things you can do. So illustration type of platforms may work but PowerPoint will definitely be suitable. And I think Jerry had more ideas. The same as you shared, uh, Google Slide works perfectly um, to create this material also. And now that you can also have this um, Paradeck app, you can also create their um, meaningful activities for them, or you can create or templates there, organizers, and you can share it via Pert Deck also. Awesome, thank you for the answers. We have more messages. Saida Ramos Hernandez's excellent presentation. Gabriela Morales says, I loved everything. I definitely will apply it in my classes. Thank you, and a crossword. Okay, thank there you. are no questions. Uh, thanks everybody for, for being here, for attending this masterclass. And I don't wanna leave without inviting you to our next masterclass. And as Wendy was saying, this was only the first part, the first bit of this series of assessing reading. And I wanna close this with a phrase. Uh, there is comprehension there is learning, as Ms. Wendy was saying. And this is really important. When students really understand and comprehend a reading, they really learn. And if they learn, they are better thinkers, better readers, better thinkers. 
thinkers. So thanks a lot for your attendance. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Thanks to both licenciados for sharing with us your knowledge and making us grow as teachers. Thank you, Ms. Ingrid Marroquin, for sharing this space with us. And so far, from Profesorados in English, the Universidad Mesoamericana, we thank a lot. Have a lovely evening. Thank, thank you. you. Here with you, uh, Diana. Thank you, thank you.